Um, the topic of daddy ball, um, coaching your own kids. And here's the angle I want to take it. I can't tell you what you should do, but I'm going to share with you my journey with Tabor a little bit and some things that I chose to do that I felt were beneficial. And I want to make it real clear off the, you know, off the bat here that Tabor's no superstar. Um, he's not uh, some great player, but when he was a young boy, I was very strategic. You're gonna hear my dog whining here. Um, he was very strategic. Come here, boy. <clears throat> Get up here. He was very strategic. We were very strategic on how we went about things, and I, I, you know, he was a very late developer. He had decent skill sets, but I didn't ever push him too hard so really it started out with just typical rec ball uh just playing in the towns that we lived in and then he played a couple tournaments probably starting at about nine but just just a couple at the end of the rec ball season and um we moved to georgia got him involved um with a, a local team it was kind of a travel team but it was it not they didn't travel too far and they played in a league and uh, with other travel teams and played in a couple random tournaments. But, you know, <clears throat> he wasn't quite, you know, fully committed to, to doing the things that I was hoping he would do as a dad. But I knew from experience that those things would come in time if I didn't push too hard. And that's exactly what, uh, what I did. I just left him alone. And if he wanted to work, which he would some, we'd, I'd go throw to him or hit him ground balls, what have you. Um, and then... You know, as, as, as time went on, uh, he started to intensify his desire to compete. At the age of 12, um, I got him involved with the travel team. Now, something that was very important to me was to get my son involved with other coaches. I didn't want to just coach him myself. I knew one day if he was going to play for me at the high school level that um, he was going to have to have thick skin because... You know, even when you go about doing things the right way, people are going to accuse players who play for their dad of having advantages. So I'm well aware of that. And um, even though that wasn't going to be the case, so at 12, I put him with a really, really tough coach, uh, really tough. And it was a tough summer for Tabor. Um, he was much smaller than a lot of the players, but it was a very good team. And he had a good skill set. But every weekend, the coach would bring in new players you know, the latest, greatest players to come play. And Tabor typically would find himself on the bench a lot, and that was fine. I didn't run and jump him to another team. I told him he had to figure out a way to get on the field. And, um, you know, that's exactly what he worked on that entire time. When he got into high school, um, he played for me. And, you know, I was very fortunate that his skill set allowed him to step onto the field. Um, I had seniors that literally came to me before the season, uh, his freshman year, and told me that, you know, hey, coach, if you don't start Tabor, you're hurting the team. So, you know, and this was varsity. These were varsity seniors. Um, but, you know, the whole thing I tried to get Tabor to understand was that his self-worth and my self-worth was not wrapped around in his ability to play baseball, that I loved him regardless still love him regardless and he's playing in college right now um you know uh, i it doesn't make me any more important or it doesn't make me puff my chest out if he's a you know a great baseball player i'm more concerned about his character his work ethic the things that are going to carry him through in life being a loyal husband uh committed being a teammate all the things that um that i preach on so you know it's, it's been an amazing journey. Wouldn't trade it for the world. And I, I've really, you know, a couple other things, really, that uh, I think I should share. Um, when he was playing for me, we made an, a pact that when we got home after games or practices that we wouldn't talk baseball uh, unless he chose to bring it up. If Tabor brought it up, then we would talk about it. And, and I adhered to that. And he never called me dad at the field. He was just another player. And I fu I'm fully convinced that if he wasn't good enough to play, that he would have been on the bench. Um, I, I truly have blinders when it comes to that. But, uh, and maybe some don't, but 
but I feel confident that I that I did. But um, anyways, you know, we had that agreement when he was at home, and um, and we stuck to it. So um, it was an amazing journey. wasn't even sure I wanted to coach him going into high school. I remember talking to Sonia, my wife, and she said, you know, you've coached all these players for all these years, and you're not going to coach your own son. Um, so I talked to other coaches that had sons that played for them in high school and picked their brains. And, and I determined that one thing I wanted to do in games was I was going to have my assistants coach Tabor um, when it came to giving him advice. If there was something I wanted to say, I sent it through my assistants. So we never had that tension of father-son, at least very little. So I just want to encourage you dads. First, I want to applaud the dads that are out there coaching. Without you, there wouldn't be a lot of teams. And that's something that a lot of other people need to understand. You know, we got to step up and volunteer. If you're not happy with the way things are going, then, then volunteer. But I don't encourage you to be a team hopper. And when things get tough, just run from adversity. You know, find ways to, to battle through it and get better. Um, allow your kid some, some times to fail. You know, there's so much we can learn from from failure. When things are going our way and everything is just perfect, um, there's not a lot of growth that takes place during those times. So, you know, when we're challenged, that's when we tend to reach down deep and really respond. So I got a few guys here. I appreciate you guys coming on. Mark, Karen, Nick, uh, Douglas, appreciate you guys being here. Um, you know, so and to tie this up, to tie it all together, you know, you have to make a decision. I just don't think that we create teams just so our son can have, or our daughter for that matter, can have this amazing opportunity that they don't deserve. Lead off, play short, pitch when they have no business doing so. Um, you know, they need to earn their spot just like everybody else. And we can still have a quality experience. One of my best friends um, that I played college baseball with, I know when his son was was young, he went through that. His son did not start all the time. And, you know, it, I think his son is better off for it now. He earned what he got. And uh, there's something to be said for that. So anyhow, um, you know, I, I've created this Dirt Bros baseball website. It's solely to help. I'm not here to sell. We're looking to put quality content out there to help people. And I hope that you'll take a look at it, maybe sign up for our newsletter, and I'll keep you up to date on any new content that we're putting out there. Um, also, got Stick and Ball TV coming out. Um, so, I've uh, been very blessed to have the opportunity to share, and I'm excited that we have a good crowd on here tonight. And uh, would love to get some more input from you. This was a tough topic. I mean, you know, the politics side and the perceived politics, the real politics, you know, all those kinds of things. And I just want to walk away from that, step aside from that, just kind of